Hey everybody, Billy Watkins here with the whole package by Premier Packaging. Uh, I think I got that right. I think that's... <laughs> you got it. <laughs> We've changed it a few times. I am, uh, I am here today with Ryan Bettingfield, uh, Corporate Director of Manufacturing. Yes, sir. Uh, we were just talking uh, briefly. You have this is your uh, third or fourth appearance on the show. Third, like. I believe. Third Thanks for you, having me back. Out of everyone, you have been on more than anyone else. I've, I've, I was thinking it's it's like the uh, Five Time Club on SNL or something like that. We should. We I'm, should do I'm glad I can be in that club. Special. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll be um, looking for my key to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, to the uh, special green room we That's have right. up here. That is right. For all the, uh, excuse me, I'm a little dry, uh, for all the uh, the folks. Uh, Ryan, you've, you've been on the show several times. Um, you were here 18 months ago. We talked a lot about freight. Mm -hmm. uh, that was... Uh, the, the deal. What, what's going on with freight now? Things have loosened up, gotten a little better? Things have gotten better. Uh, we, we now have a, a team that works on that specifically. Uh, that's headed up by Joel Permuta. Okay. And I uh, checked in with him earlier and wanted to make sure I've got my facts straight. But uh, according to Joel, the market has gotten a lot better. It's definitely a shipper's market in comparison to what it was before. Uh, capacity is really no longer an issue like it had been in the past. That's good for us. Good it's for good our for customers. us. Good for our customers. Yeah. Um, you know, good good all around. Not as great for the shippers. Right. Less profitable, but uh, says 2024 is looking pretty stable and steady, unless um, you know, unless anything happens, barring any natural disasters right. or economic disasters the, the little surprise pandemic or something surprise pandemic uh election year so who you knows? never know you never know that's right um since your last appearance your uh your job has changed your title has changed you are now corporate director of manufacturing what was it before uh, remind me. uh director of operations okay and that dealt more with the logistics warehousing and distribution so now you are uh, knee deep in in uh, all of our manufacturing processes what 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 are the changes and duties you've, you've had? Uh, changes are just the, the vertical of the business, uh, moving from operations to manufacturing, but uh, a lot of the same challenges and tasks as far as uh, leadership, team building, and process improvement. Oh, yeah. We're, we're in the middle. We're absolutely in the middle of our peak right now. We uh, are. What's, what's happening? How's that looking for us? Uh, it's looking really good. Uh, this year has been a phenomenal year for manufacturing. We have produced more this year than we have in past years, uh, to between 20 and 25 percent more. So an absolute record for us this year. It is. It is. But there's, uh, you know, contributors to that are we've, we've placed some new machinery in different places. We've had some teams that have uh, changed for the better. They're they've continued to improve at, at each site and then uh, we have a planning team now that is looking at opportunities for us to insource more than we did before and, and really maximize what makes sense for Def us to run definitely part of our overall uh, goal of, of bringing as much in-house as possible right yeah yeah you know john and jill have said it before and you know, what can we do to control our own destiny right uh, and at, at our peak, we, we've hit 170 million square feet uh, a month. Is that is that in this plant? All, all of our plants combined. That's all six combined. Okay, that's pretty impressive, I would say. I, it is. They they they're all impressive, no doubt. <laughs> um, and and part of that, I mean, you've got we've added equipment, uh, we've added uh, plants. Uh, there's a there's a learning curve there. Right? There is for sure. How do you think we're doing with that? Are we we're we're getting better? I think we are getting better. I, I think it takes time. I mean, it's a, uh, it's definitely a skill that is, um, it's a skill in a trade that there's not as many people in it as there used to be. Right. So um, we've definitely experienced that like others in the industry, but we have a lot of people with experience uh, on our management and supervision team that are really good coaches and mentors to help bring these people along it's a uh, we've talked about this before it's a it's a interesting because it is a um it is certainly uh 
being a machine operator, it is kind of a, uh, it is definitely a skill and an art form <laughs> to mm -hmm. itself, right? It is. Uh, and it, it, but it's something that can uh, uh, provide one with a very stable, uh, lucrative career for their Absolutely. entire life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we've got, you look at it from the standpoint of, is it something, is it a product that is going to be going away? And it seems to really be just the opposite with the big push for sustainable packaging, right. what's recyclable, what's not. And with boxes being made of paper and that being something that's curbside recyclable, yep. it, it's a very um, stable commodity, if you will, in supply. Not going away anytime soon. It is not. <laughs> um, can, can you talk a little bit about some of the uh, uh, new equipment that we have, what we've added? Yeah, yeah. so in Louisville specifically, we've added uh, two new flexo folder gluers over the last 12 to 18 months we've added a new uh, 66 by 125 inch die cutter has inside outside print capabilities and then has some automation on the back end of it to uh, make us more efficient and make us faster in our processes in Pedricktown New Jersey we've added a um, a new die cutter up there a 66 by 115 inch die cutter up there okay. um, it is not inside outside capable but it has um, high graphics printing up there and then it also has some automation on the tail end of it so they've got a flexo folder gluer and a um, die cutter up there to give them really a, a, a suite of capabilities that they didn't of, have before a lot of capabilities uh, uh, strategically placed throughout yes. the country basically yes, right that's right so we try to we try to do that to where it complements one another, but then also looks at what the focus of the business is in the area. Uh, what are, other than adding uh, capacity with, with new equipment, that sort of thing, uh, and, and other plants, what, what, what were some of the other changes that, that helped us increase manufacturing? We've had some leadership changes at, okay. at a few of the sites. Uh, we feel that we've, we've got the right people in the right seats. Uh, you know, culture's always been a big thing. How do we get people in those seats that are going to drive the culture that Premier wants and that makes Premier what it is. And, uh, you know, you interview somebody, you try to get a feel for it, but sometimes it's not always uh, the best fit and right. you've got to pivot and make those moves. But we feel like we've got the right drivers in the right seats right now. Very good. Uh, part of it also, uh, and it's a, it's a uh, one of those buzzwords or cliches but continuous improvement right yes how, how have we uh, pushed for that and, and driven towards that goal good question um, <laughs> it's right there yeah <laughs> so for us it's about providing the resources a lot of our managers and supervisors you know they're they're busy with the day-to-day -day task and we've been able to identify people within the organization that have that skill to be able to coach, mentor, teach, and then have the industry skill to help pass that on. So we try to deploy those people as needed to those sites and help them, uh, help the site leaders, help the site management, and assist with that while they're still maintaining their day-to-day -day operations. And then also identifying the right site leader that has that experience and the right managers, right supervisors that can help develop those new employees right. or existing employees and make them you know, more efficient, more skilled, and just help them refine their craft. As as much as uh, uh, a machine is automated, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you still have to have have the folks uh, operating it know what they're doing. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're never gonna get the it's, machine to tell you that you know the sheets coming in are bad. Right. You know, they're warped or they've got uh, delamination or when it comes out the back end of the machine, you know, to check the print to make sure everything looks good, right. make sure the quality is there. So you can automate it and... Um, but it has to have the human But it element. has to have the yeah. human element. And, you know, that's, that's something that I think sometimes people take automation the wrong way. It's how do you, how do you replace people, but, you know, how do you make them more efficient and how do you yeah. make them better at what they do? What, what, if, what would it take... Um, you know, I'm always I'm always wanting to continually improve myself, and uh, uh, you know, if I wake up tomorrow and say, "My God, I've wasted my life," and and wanted to move over to be a machine operator, how, how long how long would it take me to get up to speed? You think? We say that it me particularly. <laughs> no. That's a different story. Yeah, that is. Uh, we typically say that you can get a if a person is willing to learn 
uh, in 12 months, they'll, they'll be a good wow. machine operator. I mean, that, but a, a year, I mean, that's an yeah. investment in, of, of our it time, is. their time. It is a commitment. Yeah, it is. It is. And that, that's where, you know, you hear the people talk about the turnover and, and whatnot, but the, there's a lot of soft cost that's incurred by yeah. the time you put into teaching and training and everything else. And, you know, you don't want to lose somebody and you definitely don't want to lose them after you've invested that much time in it because, you know, that's, that's the finite thing is time, right? Right. Yeah, I'm not getting any more of it. There's no, we're not. 24 hours in a day. That's right. Uh, part of um, certainly all of this equipment um, uh, uh, helps and, and, uh, broadens our reach and and capabilities for our customers uh, but it's not the sole reason for for our success right Would no it is not I mean that the machines new machines are just improvements on what we're already doing it just helps make you um, could make you more efficient it could run faster but it, it's the people that make it what it is I mean without the people that are there manning the machines running them looking for quality issues making sure that everything's right it doesn't matter if what the machines do um we are we are quickly coming to the end of of uh, another year we are 23 is yes. about to say goodbye uh uh what is what does 2024 20, look like in terms of manufacturing for premier 2024 looks to be another good year uh we're looking to increase our production hopefully by another 10%. We think that we, we've still got that left in the tank with okay. either, uh, once again, back to the continuous and process improvements yep. and then potentially adding on more shifts, shifts. at different yep. sites and whatnot that we still have that ability. Would so. you, I would assume you'd probably start me on like second shift or third. Yes, know. yeah, yeah you would definitely be on an off shift. <laughs> so. That's all right. I'm I'm willing. I'm willing. Oh, we know. I kind of uh, I kind you know when I was a kid I used to do a swing shift. You know. Oh, like did on, you? Oh, I loved that thing. Uh, on on twelve off. I don't. Know. Yeah, <laughs> Just, it's, it's been a long time. It's for been you. a long time. Um, so, uh, you know, what what challenges do you feel like we're going to face in 2024? It seems like uh, uh, Premier has has. Uh, um, certainly gone through uh, some challenging times this year uh we've had to make adjustments we've, mm -hmm. we've had to persevere uh what do you think it looks like for 2024 uh 2024 it'll i think there'll be a continuation from what's going on in 2023 i mean you know the inflation that's the that's the big word this year right right inflation so everybody was seeing that across the board so there's been a lot of um, a lot of business that's put out for bid and I think we will continue to see that. You know, that it's a double-edged sword because yeah. that means you could lose what you have or it means you could gain. Pick up something brand Exactly. New, yeah. So um, I think we'll still see a lot of that. But, you know, still what differentiates us from a lot of people is the service level. It could, because at the end of the day, a, a, a cardboard corrugated box, excuse me, is a, is a commodity, right? A Correct. Of people, a lot of people make them. And that's what sets us apart. Uh, what we strive to do is, that's is, right. is to provide that, that level of service for customers that you're not going to get from from a lot of folks. That's exactly right. And it, that, you know, the last, what, 29 years of yeah. Premier's existence is, has been that. Because it, we've, we've gone above and beyond. Yes. Uh, but it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's a fight every day. Oh, it, it always is. Kind of, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's why it's work, right? Right. Uh, it, it, things have probably gotten better, and I would assume in, in 2024 will continue to improve. I mean, access access to materials. We're not like things aren't too crazy in terms of just no the sheets and no the capacity is, is much better than it was during the the time of COVID. I mean, during COVID you had the increase in demand, but then you also had the the issues of um, you know stressed labor force with with people not working and whatnot. So I definitely think that the the labor has gotten a lot better and, and it's more stable than it was. So it, it doesn't appear that right. the material is going to be the limiting factor for 24. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, states and municipalities, uh, they, and, and other countries, they're, they're putting laws, uh, in, into effect about, uh, sustainable packaging. Is that, mm -hmm. uh, are we seeing that, uh, have a, have an impact on premier? Um, not as yet <laughs> that's that's what i was going to say is right. not yet uh it will be coming I, I think that it'll be um it'll start to spread i know maine i think was one of the first ones to adopt it where they okay. were billing back to the packaging producers 
on the front end. Uh, but, you know, the other thing is, is we do manufacture other products aside from corrugated boxes, but the corrugated boxes are 100% curbside recyclable. Right. It has a lot to do with the push to get rid of plastics and move towards yeah. curbside recyclable items. I mean, you know, another thing that's been popular this year to talk about is the uh, forever plastics, right? The amount of plastic that's in the ocean and, right. you know, how the, it all the ends up giant there. The continent pl- of uh, yes. garbage that yes, is in the, the big, Pacific. The big yes. plumes <laughs> floating around of plastic. So, uh, you know, I, I think we've positioned ourselves to be in a good spot with manufacturing um, paper products. So, you know, there, there'll be changes because the, the big cost is the, the cost on these municipalities to actually do the recycling. Uh, I need a bigger recycling bin, you know, I, I, yes. I get a lot of big stuff at the house. And I, I mean, I, I do find my, and I have no problem doing it, uh, glad to do my part, but good Lord, like I'll, I'll be uh, out back with a, a razor blade for like 45 minutes just I cutting down boxes. But uh, I guess that's what, what, what you got to do. That's what you got to do to to protect this planet for the future generations. Uh, but I just want a bigger, wider, I don't know how pretty that would look if I just had a dumpster out front. You know, yeah, that they could come pick up. I hear that's a common complaint. <laughs> the recycling bin's not big enough. Uh, what, what what kind of factors do you uh, 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 think might affect uh, uh, the demand for packaging um, in 2024? Um, economic. It, it, it's a presidential election. Presidential year. election year. That, that's you know, the that's a big deal. But well, uh, it, you know, it depends what what people hedge towards is it are they are they scared what the economy is going right. to do so do they start um stacking away money versus spending it so you know if they're not spending money through retail and whatnot then packaging is not selling like it normally does do you remember people can go back and watch this do you remember we uh we were talking about uh, i think i had said well now on this show i've said that i want to be uh, uh i'm looking to maybe be a machine operator i think before looking, I said I wanted to be a long haul trucker. That's right. Because we were talking about freight. That's right. Do you, do you remember? Uh, do you remember your nickname or your your uh, call? Oh, <laughs> no, the, my handle. Yeah, your the, handle. the total package. <laughs> the total package. I don't remember uh, mine, but yeah. Yeah, I don't remember yours either. Nick, but, uh, nicknames are fun. Yeah, but, they are. Uh, let's talk about artificial intelligence. Let's All add right. a little intelligence into yeah. this conversation. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's been around. Uh, uh, packaging uh, for quite some time uh, but uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of large companies use AI to learn from real-world uh, customer complaint data uh, mm-hmm. on how to reduce damage to products even choose the optimum materials for a product uh, does premier use AI in any any sort of way we are knocking on the door of it and looking at some stuff right now there's some programs out there that uh, we've been looking at to beta test that uh, help you with the quality side of things help identify when there's quality issues and was the proper reaction taken and but and it's like anything else with ai it it takes time to develop as it has to learn what it is that it's looking for and whatnot but we think that we can uh, help we think that it can help us make a better quality box and and improve what we're already doing well and take that to the next level uh so yeah we're there's there's possibilities for us yeah yeah and like i said before it's not um you know it's really meant to help people be better at what they do make them more efficient and and, you know make them more productive uh the next time i get a list of questions i'm going to run it through chat gpt i think uh, for for the podcast that way i could i could use uh um a little ai myself Um, i might do the same for the answers (laughs) we could uh so ryan (laughs) <laughs> Mr. Benningfield, uh, what, what do you think about uh, 2024 for Premier? Um, you know, what's, the, what's, what's down the road for Premier's manufacturing? I think manufacturing will be very stable for 24. Uh, like I said before, we've got a, got a goal to increase by 10%, which I think that's achievable for us. I think the business as a whole, I, I think it's going to be a stable year, but with a lot of upside. Uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunities that our sales teams are drumming up that I see coming through to be quoted and, uh, you know, uh, opportunities for us to really thrive. So awesome. I think 2024 could be a good year. Looking forward to it. I am. Uh, me too. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, even even if I get that change to the the machine operator. Yeah, we're I looking it forward would be fun. to it. Well, I mean, you you've, you've uh, you were in shipping the entire time, and now here you are in manufacturing. That's right. Do you uh, do you have a, a preference, or do you? I mean, do you like you like what you're doing? I would. Oh, I, would I like think. what I'm doing. I, I like you know, it's always good to uh, be able to learn while you're doing something, and and a lot of the people on my team I, I learn from daily. Constantly learning. That's right. On a daily basis. No, oh, Ryan. Thank you for joining us on this podcast. I always enjoy talking to you. Um, Likewise, Billy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll do this again. I'm uh, sure we will. We'll come back later, uh, later in 2024. See how things are going. How about that? Let's do it. <laughs> oh, that's a, we're we're going to set that. So, uh, thanks again. Thank you all for watching. This is Billy Watkins. This has been the whole package by Premier Packaging. Until next time. See you later. Do you have comments, questions, or ideas about this topic? If so, we'd like to hear from you. Please visit primpack.com slash podcast to let us know what you think. Thanks. Thanks.